Welcome back. We want to get into security, but the door is locked. So we'll have to find another way in, I guess. So let's look around here. The wall looks very solid. The floor is marked with a tricolor grid. Same as in the other side, I guess. The ceiling looks strong but cold and brutal. Just like the Vardane. Can I actually scan some of these things? I don't know. The ceiling is made from solid uranium steel alloy. Its structural integrity appears to have been weakened by a time-space phenomenon. But this section of ceiling is still strong. That's kind of the same as the floor we got before, so I guess that's not important. What do these doors here lead to besides security? This door is labeled transporter room. That might be a way to get into security. This door is labeled computers. That's what we need to get information about Burdell's plans, probably. This door is labeled central control. That may also be useful. Don't really know. The stunned guard lies prone on the floor. Can we scan them? These guys make Spock seem decrepit by comparison, Jim. Didn't stop us from, you know, beating him. Do they have anything? No, I don't think that's necessary. No effect. I guess not. Spock appears to be in deep thought. McCoy has decided this is not a spot that he'll visit on his next vacation. Yes, why would you ever visit a place like this on a vacation? It's kind of weird. Kirk wishes that these people would stop shooting at him. That would be nice. Here we are, in the heart of Bradell's mad sanctum. I wish I could be more confident. Same. Jim, why does everyone not like me? Why does everyone keep shooting at me? I don't know, Bones. I guess it's your cheerful nature and your stoic silence. <laughs> Two traits that definitely do not describe our good doctor. Captain, I would place a high priority on finding a way to win over the security team. The Vardane think they supersede mankind. Mr. Shem indicated that the Vardane had little love for Bedell, Captain. I suspect their loyalty is less than absolute. Okay, that played the wrong voice clip, it seemed. The actual text seemed more accurate to the uh, conversation. But I agree with Spock, and I guess for that we would need to be in the computer room, so let's check there. You're too late. I've set the computer on a continuous auto-diagnostic. You'll never be able to get it online. I don't believe in the word never. Um, he's pointing a weapon at us, so I think we'd better take him out. Now let's see if he was telling the truth about the computer, though. The floor. The circuit diagrams are clearly a decoration. This is one of the rooms that I really remember from playing this game as a kid. The 3D chessboard. Although I remember the chessboard to be like smaller and on the left side of the room, which it isn't, so <laughs> I don't know. That's just human memory, I guess. But I definitely remember the chessboard. The memory unit of the station's main computer. That's probably what we need. A three-dimensional chess set. Wonder what it's doing? A three-dimensional chess set. Why is that even in the computer room, come to think of it? A micro hollow beam projector, usable to create light images on the chess game. The central processor of the main computer. A rather unconscious computer technician. 
Let's hope we didn't hurt him. Middle-aged human male, currently unconscious. Indeed. James Kirk never seems at ease in a room full of computers. Considering how many computers have tried to kill him over the years, that's kind of understandable. Dr. Leonard McCoy doesn't like working with machines, but doesn't like primitive medicine either. It's kind of a contradiction. Mr. Spock seems perfectly at home in a room full of computers. As would I be. It's my job, after all. These are various advanced designs, Captain. They appear to work on a modified Daystrom Duotronic system, version 9.0, with some enhancements I do not recognize. Well, Spock, do you feel at home here? My home is Vulcan, Doctor. Its physical appearance is quite dissimilar to this place. There are machines here, Spock. Computers. This is where you belong, isn't it? My place, Doctor, is as science officer aboard the USS Enterprise. Spock, if you left the Enterprise, I'm sure you could find a job substituting for one of these mechanical marvels. Actually, Doctor, the computing capacity of one of these machines is substantially faster than the processing power of the Vulcan brain. So you admit that you are inferior? In speed and memory, affirmative. Other areas exist, Doctor, where even you are superior to this machine. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, Spock. I just love the banter in these games. Computers, I better start thinking of something illogical to say. I don't think that'll be necessary. These don't seem to be intelligent. Anyway, let's do some scanning to see what the technician did and if we can undo it. The tricorder can tap into the core memory, provided that we can end the diagnostic cycle. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. I guess it's just a chest set. Nothing unusual. I think that still counts as a chest set. The tricorder can tap into the core memory, provided that we can end the diagnostic cycle. What is this diagnostic cycle? Can you do anything with the controls? We will need to end the diagnostic cycle, Captain. It is currently playing chess against itself. Okay, that doesn't seem useful. I guess we need to use the chessboard then to get that diagnostic cycle to end. Maybe if we can defeat it. Although if it's playing against itself, would we take over one of them? I don't really know. Captain, the computer is locked into an infinite loop. It will continue playing the game until it defeats itself. I can interrupt the moves and input my own. Try Rook to Queen's level 3. That will threaten its bishop. Okay, so I guess we can take over for one side of the game. And try to defeat the computer. I honestly have zero idea how you're supposed to know which moves are better than others. Other than trial and error, it does make a difference whether or not you beat it. Also, why is Kirk doing this? Isn't Spock better suited to... Um... Although I guess if we're playing against a computer, maybe some illogical moves would be better. So maybe that's why Kirk is uh, doing this. Anyway, threatening his bishop seems fine to me. Try knight to king level one. That will shore up our defenses. Try queen to queen's level two. Let's sacrifice our queen to take that knight. I mean, I'm hardly... I'm not really a, an expert in, in chess or anything. I don't think we should be sacrificing our queen. Or playing too defensively. It's not like we can see the boards to know if that was a good choice or not. Try rook to queen's level three. That will threaten its bishop. Let's just do that. An excellent move. Now let's push a pawn on king's level. That will force it into a more stable position. I don't really know what that would accomplish. Now move your other rook to support it on queen's level. We 
should be able to threaten the queen or the bishop. That could be good. Let's try something a little dangerous. Rook to king's level two. That tells us nothing. Now let's now move your so other just do rook this one. to support it on queen's level. It seemed to be expecting something else, Captain. Its queen is vulnerable. Let's not be too hasty. Advancing the bishop to support the rook will give us a solid advantage on the board. Again, kind of conservative play. I'm not entirely sure that that's what we're going for here. Let's confuse it with a sacrifice. It might be interesting to trade queens. Interesting. Maybe not ultimately helpful. Let's take the queen and see if it resides. I guess we'll just try that. A superb game, Captain. You have made it. The diagnostic cycle has ended. Excellent, Spock. Can you access the computer? The main memory unit will not accept my attempts to access. I will need to find a more friendly interface with enough memory to hold the information. All right. That did it. I guess they are kind of the more logical sounding moves, but it's still mostly trial and error to beat this game. Let's see if we can access the computer, although I don't think so from what Spock just said. Captain, I need to find something to interface with the computer and store the files that are dumped into it. We may be able to use the tricorders. That may be a good idea. Captain, I am connecting the science tricorder to the central computer. We can use it to tap into the computer now that the diagnostic cycle is finished. We might use Dr. McCoy's tricorder as well. All right, let's use that one too then. Captain, I am connecting the medical tricorder to the central computer. Unlike when we did that to uh, control the ship in the previous game, they're still in our inventory and we don't need to get them back manually. Uh, let's see if we can get some information now. Success, Captain. I have access to Burdell's Project Big Bang files and to the access code for his personal quarters. Oh, nice. Two birds in one stone. We have evidence we need, and we also have the code to get into his room. With this evidence, hopefully, um, we can get the security guards on our side, but um, as long as that door is locked, we're not showing it to anybody. So let's see if we can maybe use the transporter. Jim, what's that smell? We're not a gas. A knockout gas with an extremely long effect. We have mere seconds to neutralize it or get out of here. Yeah, you'll die if you stay here too long. You can walk back out. If you want to use a transporter, you need to find a way to uh, deal with that. And the way to do that is to place the air filter over these vents in the floor here. Air is being purified almost immediately. Ah, good old Starbase filtered air. So dry it makes me want to drink a glass of water every five minutes. I'm sure we can transport you into water if you really want some. Damn transporters. If man were meant to fly around the universe, God would have allowed him to disassemble his own molecules. I thought you said you weren't a religious man earlier. Anyway, transporter room. The floor. Still the floor. This seems pointless. This seems pointless. The transporter chamber. The transporter chamber. Transporter controls. The floor. The floor. Doesn't really tell you anything about these vents, I guess. The air filter from the executive quarters. Transporter decontamination conduits. These filter most biological hazards from incoming and outgoing transporter patterns. Not always 100% successful, as we know. This seems pointless. Jim Kirk. 
He hasn't seen the trap that human ingenuity can't overcome. Human ingenuity or the um, effective application of save and restore. Dr. McCoy. For a doctor, he has very little patience. Mr. Spock. He won't admit it, but he's uncertain of their success. Using a transporter is risky, but if we use our heads, it might work to our advantage. Let's go home, Jim. Finish that fight from the ship. That's not possible. The job has to be finished from here. I know. I just wish I was aboard the Enterprise right now. While it is in the beam? I'm not sure that's, you know, better than being here. Well, Spock, what do you suggest? We should attempt to gather evidence that Dr. Burdell is planning to commit genocide. Others may help us if they are confronted with the scope of Burdell's misdeeds. We need to shut down the tractor beam that is currently holding the Enterprise. Until the ship is freed, our options are limited. We should not forget that we need to be able to communicate freely with the ship. It will be necessary for us to neutralize any source of interference. Our chief priority is to find the reason for the Holocaust that was reported by the Alexander and stop it from occurring. I was hoping for more general advice. To mean like more specific. Less general actually. More relevant to our current uh, predicament. Now we could... Save new replace. just beam into the security offices, I guess. We need someone to work the controls first. No, I don't think that's necessary. Oh. Can't you use Kirk on Spock? Captain, all areas of the ship except Bridell's quarters are accessible by transport. We have access without transport to all areas except security. Unfortunately, they'll be able to draw a bead on us the moment we start transporting, and will be able to blow us away the moment we materialize. We need a distraction. No, the game doesn't even let you do that. We need a distraction, and those dummies we picked up might do the trick. They might confuse them long enough so they won't be able to shoot us. I think there are more of us. We are ready to transport the dummies, Captain. That should prove an adequate distraction for us to get into security. At least we have a chance now. Captain, all areas of the ship except Bridell's quarters are accessible by transport. We have access without transport to all areas except security. The dummies should provide a convincing decoy during transport and give us the edge we need. Set transport coordinates for security. Let's transport later. Set transport coordinates for security. I think we're ready. Let's go. That filter noise is quite annoying. And again, McCoy gets shot first. He always does <laughs> whenever you get uh, ambushed in this game. And they get back up, but they will not attempt to attack us again, so that's good. The floor. This console controls communications tracking. This seems pointless. I guess we need to turn that off to be able to talk to the ship without um, being jammed. There's some more controls over here. This console controls force fields in special projects room. Oh good, we needed that to get to the controls for a tractor beam. A chair. Indeed. Now very easy to miss, there is a control panel in the arm of the chair. This console controls special security measures. It's kind of important to notice that. And, you know, I didn't when I was playing this to prepare. <laughs> it uh, doesn't affect much, except it does cost you points. And, you know, points are the most important thing, don't you know? 
one of the martial arts dummies, of our Dane security person, of our Dane security person. From his insignia, this Vardane has the highest ranking. So that's probably who we need to talk to. Their guns are just on the floor, I guess. A Vardane phaser. Jim Kirk hopes he can find a way out of this mess. So do we all. Mr. Spock looks at the situation and wonders how they can possibly survive. McCoy enjoyed being unconscious more than he's enjoying the present moment. Well, then you should stop complaining about getting shot, if that's the case. Hi. Having a nice day? Um, okay. These security personnel have a reputation for effectiveness, Captain. I would not underestimate them. We didn't. Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a target. Let's try talking to the security guys. I give you credit, Arthur. You show extraordinary guile. Well played, Captain. I'm not playing games. I'm trying to prevent Bradell from destroying the Federation. Um, indeed. What's your name, mister? You're not so bad yourself. What are you doing, lowering yourself by working for a lunatic like Bradell? We haven't shown him any evidence or anything yet, so calling Bradell a lunatic Probably not going to help our case at this point. I'm not playing games. I'm trying to prevent Bradell from destroying the Federation. I think this is probably the right choice. I trust you have evidence to back this claim. If I presented evidence, would you help me stop him? Is there any reason why I should? Do you want to see a hundred billion people die? Do you want to see the survivors of the Federation destroy Vardane? Not particularly. And Bradell has not treated us with the honor that the soldier class of Vardane demands. If this action threatens Vardane, our class code demands that we help you. I'll try to provide that evidence. I can't stop you right now. If you return here and present evidence of your claim, I will look at it. Until you can prove your claim, Kirk, my men will hunt you down like animals. Fortunately, we already have proof of our claim. It's recorded on the tricorder, so let's show him that. I have copies of Bridell's files taken from the main computer. I believe you will find them to be authentic and of extreme interest. The date on these files and the security code is from before you boarded. It appears you are telling the truth. This action will have consequences that are not in the best interest of the Vardane. I have no choice but to help you. Looks like we did it. We got the security guys on our side. Must be nice. How goes the revolution, Captain? Welcome to security, Captain Kirk. Thank you. Welcome to security, Captain Kirk. You two twins. Do some scanning. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Nothing unusual. Seems to be pointless. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Can we scan the phaser? It is similar to a Federation phaser with a single life stun setting and a powerful molecular disruptor system. It is somewhat more volatile if damaged. I see no advantages to having one. So I guess we don't need those. No effect. Captain, these phasers are greatly inferior to our own. Their stun setting renders individuals unconscious for only a few seconds at a time. The Vardane typically have many hidden weapon caches in their facilities. Disarming them won't solve the problem. We'll just have to deal with Vardane attacks as they occur. Well, they should be on our side now, and they've been using stun, so I guess that's okay. Alright, let's uh, disable the communication tracking. I have deactivated the communications tracking systems, Captain. And I believe that that will allow us to contact the Enterprise. We're being jammed. 
We have to disable the station's communication system if we want to contact the Enterprise. I guess not, but at the very least, we now um, um, don't get guards sent after us anymore when we attempt that. Although I guess since they're on our side, that doesn't really matter. I guess it would matter if you had killed these guys and not shown them evidence. Or just not shown them evidence in general. Let's disable the force fields. I have lowered the force fields in the special project room. I guess that means both of them then. And the special security measures. I have deactivated the gas traps, Captain. I guess that refers to the gas trap in the transporter room, even though there's no reason to go back in there. And I'm also not aware of any other way of getting into security without using the... Uh, the transporter, so... Kind of pointless, but you do miss out on points if you don't use this. So you have to. I think that's all we need to do here. Well, it's security on our side and the code to Burdell's quarters. I guess that's the logical place to look for the um, doomsday weapon. But I kind of want to make sure we don't miss anything else first. So let's check this room, which should be the control room. Captain Kirk, I have detained these men for you as Security Chief Common Order. And because we went to security first, we do not need to stun these two guys, because they're on our side now. The floor. Still the floor. This seems pointless. Whoever wrote the descriptions for this mission did not do a particularly great job, now did they? A Vardain guard. A Vardain guard. The station's systems console. The station's communications station. I guess that's what we need to disable. To contact the Enterprise. The station's weapon controls. Also a good thing to disable. The main viewing screen. One of Monroe's assistants. Dr. Monroe. Indeed. Mr. Spock, as emotionless as ever, an annoyed Leonard McCoy, an annoyed James T. Kirk. Why is everyone annoyed? We're making good progress. Don't annoy me, I'm not in a good mood right now. I thought you were already annoyed. Can't we just blow up this weapon and be done with it? Well, we need to kind of find it first. Would help. The controls are quite advanced, Captain. Most impressive piece of technology. In accordance with the Vardane military code, as one who has betrayed his charge, I must make a formal admission of treason for my new masters. When is the most convenient time to make the deposition? Later. Indeed, not really important right now. How dare you come aboard this station and disturb our delicate work, you Starfleet brute? And I thought Harry Mudd was annoying. Um, you do realize that your work is threatening the Federation, right? Don't hurt me! Please! And could someone do something for my allergies? Yeah, that's what I just blurred out to random people. I guess we found the guy who is, um, allergic to the plant. Maybe we can do something for him. Middle-aged human male suffering from severe allergies. Perhaps we have something in our med kit which can help? Hold still. That should help. And try to calm down. We're the good guys. I think even the bad guys would still say that most of the time. Unless you're, like, dealing with cartoonishly evil movie villains or something. 
Is he more willing to talk now? Thank you for helping me with my allergies. I guess not all Federation people are bad. Well, we normally like to think of ourselves as humanitarians. Unfortunately, that is not what Dr. Burdell tells most Vardane. Anyway, I guess I should get rid of that creeper. That's probably a good idea. I'm assuming he's talking about the plant. How dare you come aboard this- And I thought Harry- I still think mud is more annoying. Can we do anything with these controls here? Nothing unusual about- Not scan them, apparently. Can we scan any of the other people? Middle-aged male human in average physical condition. How about our cells? I've never tried that. Young male human in good physical condition. Middle-aged male human in average physical condition. I mean, going by these, uh, <laughs> these sprites, all three of them are incredibly buff, so I wouldn't call that a that average. Vulcan male in excellent physical condition. Anyway, kind of pointless. Young genetically altered human male in excellent physical condition. Anyway, let's see if Spock can do anything with these controls, even if we can scan them. I am disabling their backups. It includes several systems that are not controlled from this station. Not sure what that accomplished, but I'm sure it's good. I am disabling their communications network. We will now have a clear channel to the Enterprise. Good. I am disabling their weapons control. I do not detect access to anything around the proto-event. That is too bad. But I guess at least the regular weapons are offline. Can we talk to the Enterprise now? Captain Kirk, is everything all right? Things are looking up, I think. Kirk out. We can. Not that it accomplishes much, but we can. All right. Uh, we also took care of the shields in the special projects room, so we should probably go there. But we'll do so in the next video.